We are keeping kind of our summer theme on this show, right? And uh, this morning, we're now going to focus on staying safe when we're outside. I think a lot of us, uh, a lot of families spending more time out in the sun. And now we bring in Dr. Spohn this morning from Academic Alliance in Dermatology to uh, really kind of drive home the point and making sure that we stay safe in this Florida heat right here in the middle of summer. So good to see you. Good to see you as well. Thank you for letting us have the opportunity to talk a little bit about being safe out in the sun. Yeah. Uh, um, especially I'm exercising a lot more outside, spending a little bit more time outside where the, the air is fresh. And as long as you're away from a lot large crowds of people, you don't have to have your mask on and on the great outdoors of your, your own neighborhood at, at home. Um, so it's a little refreshing time. But the sun here in Florida is very, very strong. One little tip I have to start with is always looking at the UV index. So what is that? If you have access to a smartphone or a smart watch, you can look at a weather app and you can actually see what the UV index is at any time of the day. Um, here in Florida, it gets up to 11, sometimes even higher in the middle of the day, especially after noon or one o'clock during the day, even when it's overcast outside. You say 11, so what does that mean mm -hmm. when you're looking at it? That is all? extreme UV. So when I look at the UV index right now, I'll look at my smartwatch, it's about a four, which is moderate UV. So if you're exercising outside at 10 o'clock in the morning, um, you would want to certainly put on your SPF at least 30 or higher every hour of your exercising, hats, sun protective clothing, um, as the day goes on, it goes up and up. Um, anything after six is high. And then the eight to 10 range is extremely high. And then we get to the, the, super, <laughs> the super duper extreme um, over 10. So that's a really important clue to know whether or not um, you should be out at all. And if so, what type of protection to, to use for yourself. You know, it's interesting too, doctor, and I've already, uh, I've already messed this up with my kids already this summer. One time we were outside, it was so cloudy and mm. I thought, oh, we're fine. They, I mean, I felt like the most horrible parent because they still ended up getting sunburn at the end of the day. I just had no clue that when it was so cloudy, the sun was still so dangerous. And I hear this all the time. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the UV rays, especially it's the UVB that often causes those burns can still get through um, to you when, when you're outside, even when it's overcast outside. Yeah. And um, I just didn't reapply. I had put sunscreen on him in the morning and then just didn't reapply as much. As exactly. And you know, that brings me to another point. Um, and I've just over the years become, uh, I, I start to prefer the sun protective clothing, especially those times when you're going to be outside for longer periods, some time at the pool or swimming in the ocean, time on a boat, something like that is to have access to sun protective clothing because using an entire bottle of sunscreen, which you'd probably need a bottle, maybe even a bottle and a half for an adult, if you're going to be outside reapplying all day long and using enough sunscreen, um, it, it becomes impractical. You spend your entire day putting on sunscreen and you just feel like a greased up pig at the end of the day, but wearing clothing. Um, so especially I have an example of a, a really good type of sun protective hat. Has a, this is one that's actually my son. So yes, even a a toddler or, um, going into preschool age can wear a hat the whole time. It actually folds up. So if you don't need as much sun protection on the neck, um, still has a nice wide brim around. Um, and then for the times when it's a little bit more heat, there's a wrap around to even protect the neck and the sides of the face. Really great for playing in the sand. And I feel like they're making a lot more of the rash guard swimsuits too, as you were talking about the protective clothing, mm -hmm. clothing which I think is really helpful. One more thing before we uh, run out of time, talk about mosquito bites and the different insect bites. We have about a minute left, but I know right. in my family, that's a big deal that we are battling constantly. Outside. It is, and it can be um, lead to a skin infection, especially if you itch them and scratch them to the point where they're bleeding. Um, so sun protection, I'm sorry, um, insect protection by using insect repellents, especially in the middle of the day. So the, the biting mosquitoes that cause uh, a lot of the diseases that we worry about, we're hearing about dengue right now in Southern Florida, Zika virus is always something that's a hot topic. It's wearing a sun, uh, uh, insect repellent that has DEET in it, D-E-E-T, um, really would be the most recommended. You can also spray your clothing with permethrin and you can find that um, a variety of different stores, including, you know, some of the, the, the larger um, home stores, such as um, yeah, we can find around. Yeah. 
Dr. Spohn, thank you so much for your time this morning. I'm so glad that your offices are open. We didn't even touch on it, but making sure you stay in touch with your dermatologist is absolutely crucial, getting those skincare checks. So again, your offices, your team is open. There is the number. Make sure you call, make those appointments, stay up on your health, certainly your skincare health. Doctor, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.